So we all know by now Rolex needs a strong secondary market. It's like that secret ongoing romance that neither side will admit to, but both sides know is naughty and will never go away. Well, like all relationships, especially the forbidden ones, rough patches are an inevitability, and it seems in recent months that this relationship definitely has been on the rocks. Almost every effort that Rolex have seemingly made to stimulate their forbidden partner have fallen short. Three retail price increases, no secondary market uptick. Big discontinuations, no secondary market uptick. And now the rumors of so-called production issues on the GMT Master Pepsi limiting AD stock. Almost seems like a fabrication that's come either directly from Rolex or secondary market dealers in the hope of creating some hype. So what is the condition of the secondary market? I'm Vinny, one of those dealers. It's June 2023 and this is the true state of the watch market. Welcome back to the channel. A lot's happened these last couple of weeks, hasn't it? Fake Amiga record-breaking auction sales and Tissot PRX 35mm to one side. I want to kick things off with this bad boy. Introducing the Rolex Hype Toner. Yes, it's the special edition 100 years of Le Mans anniversary piece in solid 18 karat white gold. With for Rolex strangely gimmicky Amiga-esque vintage throwback details. <sighs> but none of that really matters because you're not going to get one. And I'd even wonder if a secondary market dealer like myself would come across one any time soon. What's the point? Hype. Efforts from Rolex to get people talking about the brand are getting louder and louder amidst a flailing economic landscape. This is a piece of marketing, plain and simple, because this is out of character for the brand. Gimmicky, one-off releases with red highlight details and no green dial. This is Amiga or even Tag Heuer. Now don't get me wrong, it looks great, but I don't see this as anything more than a direct effort for Rolex to create hype around the brand. Now it's been over 18 months since the so-called market crash and there are lots of dealers on here preaching that the market is booming and everything is rosy and stock is selling out easily. Now I was asked the other day, is it conceivable that some dealers are allegedly selling 12 Submariner dates every month? And as an active dealer in the industry, I've got to say, honestly my answer would be no i don't think it is quite honest i don't think it is a realistic reflection of the current market because quite frankly not just the secondary watch market and the luxury business in general but all businesses in retail and all businesses that don't offer vital goods like food or utilities for example are struggling. That is the economy. That's the economic landscape. Buying a luxury watch isn't something out of necessity. And at the moment, all businesses are feeling the pinch and particularly the watch market and the secondary watch dealers. We have absolutely seen a fall in demand from sales as even compared to a year ago. There are a lot of backpack dealers and smaller secondary market dealers that have gone bust. I know of three guys who have just given up on it because demand is smaller than it was even a year ago and it's a hell of a lot smaller than it was 18 months two years ago. So how has the typical client demographic changed from 12 months ago? Even 12 months ago there was the presence on the secondary market of investors. Now at the moment I have to say there aren't that many people buying watches, buying Rolex to invest in and to add to investment portfolios or to put away for long-term gains. Those guys, and particularly those crypto boys that have now ran back off to their parents' spare rooms to play Call of Duty back where they belong, they're no longer players on the secondary market and buying watches to make a quick flip gain on. Which clients exist now? Which clients make up the bulk of the players in the secondary watch market? Well, you might be glad to know that it is now collectors. It is people who want to wear Rolexes, want to actually wear these watches that they're buying from us. And many of them were first time buyers around 2020, 2021 and bought into all of that hype and now have turned into collectors. Now are going down that rabbit hole, going on that journey of collecting. They've caught the disease and it will never leave them. And now they're looking at other brands. Is Rolex still the most popular watch brand on the secondary market compared to 12 months ago? Absolutely, of course it is. However, as I said before, 
interest is increasing in other brands. We're even seeing now on Instagram that other dealers are starting to advertise brands that I've never seen them advertise before. Grand Seiko's are on the rise. Omega's are on the rise. We've only just started to stock Grand Seiko and I had bad opinions of the brand before. Having held them, wearing one right now, this is the Grand Seiko SBGM221, the GMT. We've got this advertised at £3,000. You know, three thousand pounds for a watch which is the case is entirely hand finished to a very high degree of black polishing. They call it Zeratsu polish on these Grand Seikos. The facets, the hour markers, the handset, everything is polished and hand finished. So there is a massive bang for buck in other brands, and those new market entrants, as I said, are now starting to learn about other offerings in the market. What is general demand like then today on the secondary market? I think a lot of this is linked to the economic landscape. As I said, in the UK, the economy is performing poorly and it's still performing poorly. And it seems that the only uh, macroeconomic measures that has been taken is the Bank of England increasing interest rates. It seems almost every fortnight that interest rates are going up. Why is this important and why is this relevant to the secondary watch market well it's relevant because it's affecting everybody not just the uh, the working class but also the wealthier these types of high net worth individuals have portfolios of property and what we are seeing is in the uk is that there are much fewer rental properties available because it's really with high interest rates and high mortgages it's not really worth as a business proposition to rent property out anymore in certain areas and therefore there has been sell-offs of houses those wealthier individuals as well are selling off alternative assets alternative investments that they own such as fine wine whiskey art and of course luxury watches we are getting more inquiries more messages from individuals looking to sell watches than individuals looking to buy them from us and that's a problem and that immediately tells you that now demand well supply certainly would outstrip demand in terms of the liquidity on the secondary market but a big problem with that still is with those guys looking to sell inventory th their expectations are ridiculous the other day i had a client come to me wanting fifteen thousand pounds for a rolex submariner starbucks and i made it very clear to him that look, we'd, we'd even struggle to sell it for that so how can i give you a top dollar retail price when I need to make some kind of margin because that's the whole point of business we have to make money there are many people still caught up with the situation as it was a year ago and that still need to educate themselves on the actual uh, shifting of trade values and it's shifted quite a lot the, this last year that still is a fact that many people don't realize so how have we beat the waitlist adapted to market changes the first thing that we have done is brand differentiation so we're offering actually a much wider pool of brands now trying to tailor more for the collector more for the enthusiast as well as still trying to offer rolex but rolex actually now consists of i'd say around 50% of our inventory. The other 50% is made up of other brands. It's also important that we differentiate on brands because profit margins on Rolex are actually the worst margins of any brands that we offer. As I said before, we'd be lucky to make eight to 10% on a Submariner. You know, we've had a Submariner, brand new Submariner 2023, that is, well, many would say the most wanted timepiece in the world yet we've had that in stock for two weeks now it is priced at 11799 it's a 2023 and we still haven't sold it and that's come as a great surprise to me you know and that really reflects that demand in the market has fallen there are dealers who are peddling a rhetoric that everything is better everything is booming and that's not the case dealers are having to work much harder now for your money one thing that is also changing is the great deal of fake news and fake hype that there is on social media the market is stable things are not rising rapidly they're not falling rapidly it's stable but demand has fallen so hype 
from Rolex, as I said before, I think they're trying to influence the secondary market as well to stimulate it somewhat, but it's also coming from unscrupulous secondary market dealers. There are some individuals on YouTube who have highlighted a practice of fake views and fake likes and fake subscribers. If you look at some channels that present an image of they're doing really well and they're selling dozens of watches every month, and you look at the views on their channel, after 10 hours they get 10,000 views, after 21 hours they get 21,000 views, 40 hours, 40,000 views, you know, that kind of growth, that linear growth of views on YouTube, if you've been doing it for, you know, we've been doing it for a year now, you'll know that's not how it works. But because you as the consumer can see that this is getting so many views, you are applying a trustworthiness to such and such channels, and therefore believing what they are saying. And there is a lot of fake news and frankly bullshit coming out of the mouths of certain dealers. Right now guys, one of the main things that I would advise you is to really whack your bullshit filter right up to 100 because I'm, I, personally, I, I've got to the point where I, I'm, I'm start, starting to lose interest in watching YouTube because it's insulting my intelligence. Finally, where will the market be a year from now? Well, I'm sure more dealers will be forced to differentiate and offer different brands like we have. And I hope a year from now that the economy improves because I think that underpins almost absolutely everything. And I also think in the next year we'll see even more Rolexes, maybe even some stainless steel sports watches fall below that retail price. Time will tell. Anyway guys, thanks very much for joining me this week. Go check out beattheweightlist-watches.com and also go and check out one of our sister companies stadiumframes.com as well if you're a football fan. Until the next one, take care. Thanks for watching.